This is a good move. Try to dance him. Dancing is forbidden. Dancing is forbidden. Yoo-hoo, running crew, welcome to Dancing is Forbidden and Aqua Teen Hunger Force Exploration. I am Ronnie, and on this podcast, I am watching through and talking about every Aqua Teen episode, one episode at a time. And the episode we are watching through and talking about this week is Season 3, Episode 5, E. Dork. What's y'all doing? Y'all playing? Look, we are advancing the world through technology. Because it looks like demo boys is... E Dork premiering August 29th, 2004, and this continuing the trend of episodes that I know I've seen live on TV. I don't know if it was when it premiered exactly, but I know I've seen this. And and the reason I kind of keep bringing this up is because there's so many season two episodes that I did not see on TV. But for whatever reason, I've seen a lot of these season three ones. But I just remember thinking this one was funny as hell. I always liked this one, but I think I only saw it maybe once, maybe twice growing up uh, until I, you know, had access to it digitally years later. And I always wanted to see this one more, so I'm really excited to get into this one today. Of course, the themes of this one revolving heavily around technology in a very, very silly way. So it's always a treat when Aqua Teen focuses on that, like episodes like Interfection, PDA, that kind of thing. But this this one, they're a bit more uh, conceptual with it. But yeah, really, really stoked to talk about this episode. Before that, we've got some other stuff to talk about. First up, our Aqua Teen news this week. And I'm really excited to let you know that Bob Pettit, the background artist and prop artist for Aqua Teen, basically you know, a fourth of this podcast is discussing his work specifically. He is on Twitter. Now, apparently he's been on Twitter. I've tried to find Bob for a while now, just anywhere online, and I could not, not even a website, nothing. But out of the blue, he just started following me on Twitter a couple weeks ago. And since then, he's been uploading a ton of concept art from Aqua Teen that he did back when the show was still on the air. And it's been such a treat to see that. But also, Bob, he'll, he'll throw in some tidbits of information, and he's very friendly. You can reach out to him and ask him stuff, and he'll, he'll respond. I, I've been talking to him a little bit here and there, and I think it's just a matter of time before we get him here on the podcast. But definitely check out Bob on Twitter. That is Pettit underscore art, or just check the link in the show notes, because essentially what he's doing is uploading the stuff that they should have put on the Baffler Meal box set, right? You know, the uh, earlier volume DVDs, they had the concept art on them, and it, it's so cool to watch that. And then when Baffler Meal came out, they had the new episodes on DVD, but no special features. But Bob, he's, he's showing us some special features right now on Twitter, so definitely check that out while he's still doing it. Again, that is Pettit underscore art, or just check the link in the show notes. And speaking of Baffler Meal, of course, if you don't own that box set and you would like to, check the link in the show notes. You can use the affiliate link to buy it on Amazon. A couple bucks gets kicked back to the podcast at no additional cost to you. So that's it. That's our intro stuff. Let's jump on over and see what was going on in pop culture the week that Edork premiered. Getting mistranslated all the way to the top of the box office this week, we have the film Hero bringing in a cool 18 mil. And Hero, it is a wuxia film, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And that is basically like a Chinese martial arts film. Uh, Jet Li is in it, a, a bunch of other famous Chinese actors. I'm not super knowledgeable on these kinds of movies, but looking at this film, it looks amazing. It looks so good. Like just the visuals are so beautiful. The color use is really interesting. And I guess this is just one of the best looking films of all time. I mean, from what I saw, I could totally buy that. And what I found interesting is that even now in 2023, there's like no 4K release of this movie. I guess all like the digital like the or the home releases rather are not that great, which is kind of strange considering it's such a beautiful looking movie. But it's kind of uh, it, it tells the story of this warrior who he has to kill these assassins to to gain court with the king because the, uh, the assassins want to kill the king. But uh, there, there's more going on there. I don't want to give anything away. But what's really cool about this film is it's actually the first Chinese language film to top the American box office. So this this uh, film, you know, 18 mil, it's not the biggest number we've seen during these segments, but that is pretty cool that this is the first film to do that or the first uh, Chinese language film to do that, that is. So this film actually would have been 
advertised on Adult Swim at the time. So let me play you a trailer ripped directly from this month in 2004 that was played on Adult Swim. A soldier with no name is on a mission of revenge against the army that massacred his people. Now, he must take on the Empire's most ruthless assassins. To reach the enemy, he has sworn to defeat. This August, an outlaw will become a legend. Jet Li, hero. Rated PG-13. Theaters Friday, August 27th. So again, that's coming directly from an Adult Swim uh, VHS rip from, from like this month. It wasn't the exact night the Aqua Teen episode aired, but a little bit beforehand. So that's a little bit about Hero. It looks really cool that this one's getting added to the list. You know, the list of cool shit that we found doing this podcast. And as you can expect, right, this is a, a film made in China. There are no shared cast or crew between the film Hero and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So moving on from there, we have our music, but we got kind of a, uh, a slow week this week because our top album is again Autobiography by Ashley Simpson. We already talked about that. And then our top single is uh, Lean Back by Terror Squad, which we discussed in our last episode as well. But we do have a new top alternative track this week. You heard that right. Our top alternative track this week is Breaking the Habit by Linkin Park. And what's surprising about this is you might be thinking, haven't we talked about this album before? Like the album that this is on? Yes, we did a long time ago. Meteora, the album that this song is off of, came out about a year and a half ago at this point, back during season three of Aqua Teen. But it really demonstrates the power of the album Meteora and the band Linkin Park that a year and a half later, they're releasing Breaking the Habit as a single, and it's still the number one single on the alternative charts. Like, this album was just huge at the time. And this is their fifth and final single from Meteora. So this is the last one. Like, they're done putting singles out from this album. But again, they are five for five with their singles going to the number one spot on the alternative charts here. So very impressive. So yeah, that is our music this week. That means we've got one more thing to talk about. We've got some video games. And the video game we are talking about this week is called Amazing Island on the Nintendo GameCube. Amazing Island coming out just a few days before this episode of Aqua Teen premieres on August 25th, 2004. I had never heard of this game before, but I was watching some footage and it seems like kind of an interesting take on trying to create a, uh, a, a Pokemon kind of game because the idea is that you are this kid character who like ends up on this island and then you have to go through these mini games, but you create your own monster and have like the monster like participate in the mini games and stuff. So it's about like monster creation and your monsters have stats and stuff and and you use the monster that way. So a little similar to Pokemon, but it seems like they kind of tried to do something different here, which is kind of cool. So it was pretty fun to watch some footage of this and and reading people talk about how much they liked this game growing up. But despite that amazing island, it just received mixed reviews. It wasn't like super popular and I don't think that they made any more after that so that is our pop culture this week it is august 29th 2004 and you just you love all things asian okay you just saw hero and it absolutely knocked your socks off it blasted them off you couldn't believe the visuals it was incredible you're also playing amazing island the new game from japan and it is so cool you can make your own monsters you can play mini games what more do you want from a video game? And also, you're listening to that Linkin Park single because Mike Shinoda, he is of Japanese descent. So you are so wrapped up in Asia right now and, and you're turning on Adult Swim because you're so excited. You say, yes, it's Saturday night. My anime is coming on. This is going to be amazing. But wait a second. This, this doesn't look right. Fucking Family Guy's coming on? Th what do you mean Family Guy's coming on? 
Ah, oh, fuck! It's fucking Sunday night, not Saturday night. You missed your anime the previous night. You're in a bad mood. You're just, you're so upset, but eh, Adult Swim's on, so let's just watch it anyway. Let's see what comes on. I mean, how, how bad could it be? So at 11 p.m., you got Family Guy coming on with the episode Running Mates. This being the one where Peter and Lois are running against each other for uh, the, the uh, school board president. After that, at 11.30, we have Harvey Birdman, attorney at law with Gone Efficient. And on this one, they decide they want to cut some costs. So they bring in a guy named David, who is like an expert at this, but his name is just spelled DVD because he, he cuts so many costs. He cut the vowels out of his name, so it's just DVD. After that, we get at 11.45, C-Lab 2021 with Craptastic Voyage. Similar title to Unremarkable Voyage, but of no relation, I'm sure. At midnight, we get our episode of Aqua Teen here, E-Dork, which is a new episode. Again, the only new episode we have in this lineup. 12.15, we get the Brack Show with We Ski in Peace. 12.30, we get the Venture Bros with the incredible Mr. Brisby, which again was a new episode the previous night. So Venture Bros, I'm surprised that they're coming out with so many episodes consistently here in a row. I mean, if you were a Venture Bros fan at the time, which if you were, you were, you were an early adapter, but uh, you would have been ecstatic to have all these episodes back to back of Venture Bros coming out. At 1 a.m. we get the Oblongs with Disfigured Debbie. And then at 1.30 a.m. we wrap up our night with home movies. I don't do well in parent-teacher conferences. And of course, that is like an early Home Movies episode, so this would have been one of the original ones that aired on UPN even when the show first came out before Adult Swim picked it up and revived it and, and gave it the life that it should have had. But the cool thing about these early Home Movies episodes is they are all retroscripted, so it's just kind of like ad-libbing. They're all just kind of talk like they kind of know what the episode is supposed to be about and then they just kind of go for it, which which gave the early seasons uh, uh, the, or the first season, at least of the show, such a unique feel. And, and the cool thing about home movies is as the seasons go on, they kind of they get more structured as it goes on. It's, it's kind of interesting to watch the the transformation of that show. But yes. That is our lineup this week. We have Family Guy, Harvey Birdman, C-Lab, Aqua Teen, Brack Show, Venture Bros, Oblongs, and Home Movies. Again, a good lineup. This, to me, an appropriate Adult Swim lineup. None of that fucking ripping friends bullshit. Get that out of here. Don't want to see none of that. These are the heavy hitters, the, the big dogs. Before we head out of here, I do want to talk about a series of bumps that would have been playing at this time. And the theme of it was the Aqua Teen Hunger Force cancellation continues so it would say that aqua teen is being canceled but then it would say new episodes every sunday or whatever so obviously silly here i mean aqua teen was probably one of the bigger shows on the network at the time but what they would have been showing alongside that would be uh, a popular one was all three aqua teens in a blue car just driving we got like a side shot as they were driving to this leisurely music and the text would kind of be underneath or whatever and then i saw another one where shake is driving the car by himself and he gets hit by a truck uh so those are some of the things that were going on they were teasing the aqua teens cancellation 11 years before it actually got canceled but all right i don't know about you but i'm ready to jump in and talk about E Dork. This episode of Dancing is Forbidden is, as always, brought to you by the wonderful Moon Masters over at patreon.com slash dancing is forbidden, chipping in one dollar a month, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month to keep this silly podcast chugging along and reporting for duty this week we have two new moon masters added to the mix first of all we have rosemary at the duffel bag of cash tier rosemary you're a boss thanks for signing on and i'm seeing here that rosemary liked the dave willis post show i did over there on the patreon of course if you sign up at the five dollar and up tier like rosemary did you will get access to all sorts of exclusive content and new stuff is being added every single month. So Rosemary, I like that you jumped in there and I like that you were loud and proud with pressing like on that post. Really like to see it. And also signing on this week, like an absolute maniac, signing up to the number one in the Hoodgie tier, we have Jason. Jason, you absolute unit. Thanks for signing up. 
Looking at Jason's Instagram here, I see somebody's a fan of Linkin Park, so I hope that you enjoyed some of that breaking the habit discussion earlier. It's actually good to see that because usually I get stuck in my own head like, why am I talking about any of this? Does anybody care about any of this? And I'm glad to see that some people hopefully do. Rosemary, Jason, thank you guys again for, for signing up. It really does help the show. And of course, it's nice knowing that people want to support the show financially. It gives me a big head. It makes me kind of cocky. It turns me into an insufferable asshole. So seeing that Rosemary and Jason signed up uh, back to back this week, uh, I was probably not very fun to talk to because I was acting like a big hot shot like Russell Crowe. Coming up next, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. E-Dork premiering August 29th, 2004 with a TV 14D rating for suggestive dialogue. Really off the top of my head, the only bad thing in this episode would be like the references to bestiality and the, and the porn that Carl is watching. We will get more into that as the episode progresses here. But in terms of voice cast on this one, it's just our usual gang of suspects. We have just the Aqua Teens in this episode. Although I suppose that there's like a little cameo of a robot that the uh, e-helmet will turn into. So we'll talk about that more when we get there. But yeah, there's, there's nobody outside of the usual suspects that we would find in this one. And according to the commentary on this episode, this one was based on kind of an unused Space Ghost idea. So the idea for the Space Ghost episode, at least according to Dave Willis in the commentary was that Space Ghost was going to have a cell phone that kept getting more attachments until it became a robot and took off running in the other direction. And this, similar to the Dumber Dolls idea, if you don't remember, the idea was Space Ghost got a doll that hated him so much, it was like a dancing doll, it eventually danced into some flames to kill itself to get away from him. So you could see that they were playing a lot with nobody likes Space Ghost, that was kind of the idea of the show. So it seems like the idea of Space Ghost getting this cell phone would have been in the show's final proper season, which we've talked about in previous episodes of the podcast, the one that Matt Harrigan was running. And Matt and Dave were basically, they were working on Aqua Teen, but Matt and Dave would chime in with notes. And I guess that was like an idea they really liked. It didn't get used, so they ended up using it here. So, of course, this was a question I brought up to Dave Willis when he was on the podcast. I asked him about any other scripts that would have been inspired by rejected Space Ghost ideas. And off the top of his head, he couldn't think of anything. But look, we found something else. He confirmed it in the commentary. So, as you can imagine, I am writing him a very strongly worded and angry email right now. I hope he receives it well, but, you know, this is kind of unacceptable. And I hope that he pays the full legal price for his indiscretion. So... I think that's all the setup for this episode. Actually, no, that's not true. There's something else I need to tell you, another commentary tidbit. They mention in the commentary that this episode was easy to cut, which means it was easy to kind of edit and, and figure out the staging of things. Because it's a Shake-centric episode, but the kind of gag here is Shake has no mobility. So because of that... We don't change locations a ton in this episode, and this episode is very dialogue-driven. So, because of that, we might end up with some long clips. I hope you can forgive me, like I have forgiven Dave Willis. But just gonna tell you now, apologies if the clips go on kind of long, but they're very just dialogue-heavy, and also they kind of just casually and slowly evolve the dialogue. So there's no clear and easy way to cut it. I think we'll be okay, though. I mean, after all, something tells me that we might all be Aqua Teen fans, and that's kind of what we're here for. So let's jump into our first clip. Again, we are not discussing Space Catas. That will be on the Patreon at a later date. So, okay, jumping in, we have Frylock working on his computer. This is a very similar setup to the previous episode, G Wiz, because on that one, we have Frylock on his computer and Meatwad bugging him. Well, here, we have Frylock working on his computer and Shake is going to come in the room to bug Frylock. But Shake, he is here to brag about this new technology he has, his e-helmet. And to quickly describe the e-helmet, the whole joke here, the whole idea is it's this bulky, ridiculous contraption that you would never use. And essentially, it is just a giant cell phone. So there's like a helmet portion of it. There are goggles over that that go over your eyes. I should mention on the forehead of the helmet, there is an LED panel that we will see referenced later. But then on, on Shake's right side, there's like this giant phone that swoops over. And then there's a backpack portion with a bunch of wires running from the helmet into the backpack. And he's also wearing this kind of leather belt 
that that helps uh, maintain some stability, I guess, and, and helps distribute the weight of this giant thing that he has on his head. And what's going to happen, he's going he's gonna to come in and, and kind of brag about this to Frylock, and he's going to jump aside, revealing to Frylock that he bought Frylock one as well. We'll see a little helmet on the ground behind Shake. Of course, visually, the joke is that uh, Shake, it takes him a long time to jump out of the way. You will hear that in the audio there with the reveal music. But yeah, there's a helmet on the ground, and there's a little bow right on top. Do you even have it on? Have what on? What do you... I've been frantically text messaging you for three hours. I thought you were ignoring me. But I guess you don't have one of these. Huh? Huh? What is it? This happens to be an e-helmet. And it will change the way you think and live forever. Yeah, and what about the pack? It allows the e-helmet to change the way you think and live forever. So it's a battery. Yeah, a battery. Try 12 batteries. And it's heavy as hell. But it is also cool as crap. You ought to get one. Well, I'll tell you what. It seems awfully convenient, Shake. But I think I'll just stick with my cell phone. But you don't even know what this does yet. Okay. What does it do, Shake? What could it possibly do? It's a cell phone. Wow. <laughs> but it also text messages. Aha! <laughs> yeah, so does mine. Oh, yeah? Well, you think you're so great, huh? Well, check this out. My, mine has an antenna. Where's, where's your antenna? Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm taking a picture of your stupid ass. Is that a really a camera? Oh, it's only 14 megapixels. But it works for what I need it for, which is really nothing. <laughs> this is not over. That is Frylock. He just throws his cell phone and it explodes. You don't see Frylock's, like, you don't see the things that he throws. Well, first of all, he doesn't throw a lot of things. But when he does, you don't really see it explode here. This might even be, like, the first time something he throws explodes. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna back that up right now. But going back to the visuals of the E-Helmet very quickly, it gives me huge, like, 70s technology vibes. It's like a cream color with orange... Uh, highlights on it. it. It's not the best looking thing, but I definitely could appreciate the aesthetic of it. But it reminds me a lot of the Rebel helmet from like the original Star Wars films. I don't know why. That's just the vibe I get from it. But some other visual elements from that episode is, like I said, there's an L LED panel or maybe LCD panel on uh, the helmet here. And when Shake does his text messaging, it pops up and says, I am badass on his helmet, which is a great text message. That's the kind of text messages that I hope that you are sending as well. So to get into the story of the episode, I find this reveal to be a little confusing because we have Shake coming in like, oh, you know, I've been texting you all this time. I thought you were ignoring me. But then he seemingly knows that Frylock didn't have the helmet on. He, like he reveals it to him for the first time. Of course, if he felt the need to do this, I would assume Frylock would have no reason to know what the helmet was. So then Shake should know that, that Frylock wasn't getting these texts. So either Shake was making up that he was texting Frylock for three hours, or I just don't know what's happening here. But yeah, we see Shake trying to sell this new technology that he is clearly invested in. I do have to note that he was only gifting Frylock the helmet portion, not the phone part, not the battery pack that allows the helmet to change your life forever. But still, uh, surprising that Shake would give this to somebody, that he would give a gift to Frylock. How could he afford this? Uh, how? Why would he even think of this? It's not in Shake's nature, but that's what's happening here. And I have to appreciate the alliteration from Shake. He says that uh, the E-helmet is, is heavy as hell, but it's also cool as crap. So, <laughs> nice wordplay from Shake. I want to talk a little bit about something that Frylock said. He said that his, his 2004 cell phone, it's, it's a flip phone, that is 14 megapixels. I think that there was uh, uh, like some sort of mistake in the script. Either they picked a random number or a period was forgotten because 1.4 megapixels would have been more appropriate for the time. 14 megapixels is like the, the megapixel count for a camera phone today. So back in 2004, almost 20 years ago, there's no way that there were cell phones with 14 megapixel cameras. It's just, I, I don't know what the issue was here. Um, again, I don't know if a, a period was dropped or, or what's going on but Frylock just being like yeah it's only 14 megapixels either he's humble bragging that he has like this insanely powerful camera phone for the time or it's just obviously a mistake because this is nuts like like my my pixel 5a which came out in like i don't know the past couple years that's that's the megapixel count that i basically have on my phone so uh good on Frylock maybe maybe he made this like really futuristic phone who knows 
But okay, back to the story here. We hear that Frylock, he's not buying this helmet. Like, he doesn't want to use this. And then he pulls out his phone, takes a picture, and Shake gets very jealous because all that his e-helmet does is make phone calls. He can't take pictures with it. So uh, he, he's going to try and rectify that. But before that happens... We are going to be treated to a schoolie D transition where Shake is trying to leave Frylock's room. Everything he's wearing is so heavy, so he kind of struggles to get out. Frylock actually helps him. He grabs a, a hand truck or a dolly, whatever you want to call it. He scoops Shake up and then pushes him out into the hallway. And we yo getting all y'all money. Y'all like Tommy. You ain't got no job. So schoolie D calling out even something I said previously is like, where did you get your money? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you guys don't have jobs. We can assume Frylock makes money uh, on his computer and with his inventions, but how could Shake afford this? Uh, Schooly says that you're like, Tommy, you ain't got no job. I had to look this up, but apparently this is a, ref a reference to the show Martin. There was a character named Tommy, and they would joke about how Tommy didn't have a job. So that's where that's coming from. Here's a Martin uh, Aqua Teen reference for you in case you ever need one of those, which I'm sure you will. So keep that one in your back pocket. So now on to our next scene here. We open it on Frylock. He's inside watching TV. I can't make out what he's watching. It's nothing that I'm familiar with having seen in the show before. It looks to be some sort of live action uh, shot, but you know, we just see Frylock in the green chair and we're kind of pulled away. So that's really all you can make out. But kind of cool to see Frylock just watching TV in these moments. It's usually Shake or Meatwad watching TV. So I'm glad he gets some TV time as well. And then we will go outside. We will see that Shake is, is there calling for everyone to come outside. He wants to show off the uh, photo upgrade that he added on to his e-helmet. We can see here the e-helmet. It's a modular system. You only put on what you need here. And he decided now he needs cameras. So we have these like old timey like I'm talking 1900s uh, kind of uh, giant camera boxes on top of the e-helmet but it's got two lenses it's got like two cameras on it which is kind of cool I'm sure that maybe it does some splicing technology to to give you some better resolution or something but there's two cameras on top of those old timey ones that look ridiculous they are mounted to the e-helmet and then there are also now some IV bags that are directly going into Shake's abdomen to uh, keep him hydrated because of all the stuff he has to carry around but then we will see Meatwad with Frylock's e-helmet on and Shake he will not like this one bit hey everybody come on outside it's picture time hey boy I I'm Commander Meat and you are in direct violation of Space Treaty 109. <laughs> Your ass is mine. Aha! Treaties only go up to 103. <laughs> Everyone from space knows that. Well, well, I mean, I know that. I, I was just playing with you. Those you know. treaties are very real and very serious. Is that... Where did you... That is not your e-helmet. Oh, well, yeah, it is. Because Frylock says they're stupid, that's why I can wear it. Because I don't know no better. Why was I not e-messaged about this? Because I told you that to your face with my mouth. This is not how we talk now. Do you think I can hear very well with this on? <laughs> Do we just I like that shake. I mean, obviously he's doing this to brag about his new photo taking technology. But I like that he's trying to get uh, Frylock and Meatwad and them all together to take a picture. It's very funny to me that he, he suddenly cares about that. But of course, great back and forth between Shake and Meatwad about the space treaty situation. I like that little detour from the episode. And I like how they're talking almost mystically about people from space, even though at this point they have uh, communicated with many beings from space. And that makes me wonder, I think at this point, has Meatwad been to space yet? Like, I know in Space Conflict from Beyond Pluto, both Frylock and Shake go in the Plutonian ship. Of course, in Universal Ray Monster, we have Frylock going through the Fargate to uh, appear in the Plutonian ship as well. I don't know that Meatwad has been to space yet. I guess in Balloonenstein, he did get sucked through that, like, uh, portal thing. So who knows where he ended up there. But yeah, I can't, I can't think of any instances where he's, like, on a spaceship or anything at this point. Although, I guess we could talk about the end credits, you know, where we see the Aqua Teens in space. And we see that in the intro as well. So whatever. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> I appreciate the way that Shake is trying to convert people to this new technology or this new way of communicating. I am definitely guilty of this. For example, if my wife needs to uh, tell me a recipe, like she'll send me a recipe that she found, I'll be like, no, don't send it here. Don't send it in the Facebook chat. Send it on Discord so I can look at it later. Don't send it right now. There's a channel in our server called Recipes. Put it there! Uh, that kind of situation. So I, I know how Shake is feeling uh, regarding trying to convert people to these, these new technologies. Although I would argue 
uh, putting it in a Discord where you can easily find it later is better than just like telling it to somebody who will probably forget about it. The E helmet here, it is in no way a better solution to any of the problems that it is supposedly solving at this point anyways. Of course, as the episode goes on, maybe there, there are a few pros to it. So, okay, jumping back into our scene here, we ended our last clip with Shake saying, do you think I can hear very well with this thing on because it's covering his ears? And then on the texting portion of the helmet, it'll pop up saying, no, I can't. And this will be revealed kind of showing us that it'll, it'll show up on meat wads as well. Uh, so when one person texts, it like shows up on the other person's uh, at the same time. And then I think Meatwad fires back with OMG because that'll pop up on both of their helmets. And then Shake will do like a little smiley face as well. <laughs> you check that out? Did you read that? <laughs> Those are my electronic emotions. It allows me to conserve my body's energy for carrying all this stuff. Yeah, it looks like it's getting bigger. Oh. You must be referring to the e-photo plug-in. You <laughs> pop it on your back and you go. These are travel size, baby. All that is a camera? Mostly. The bottom part here keeps me intravenously hydrated. Because <laughs> let me tell you, this e-crap is heavy. Why don't you just go to the horse drink you some water? Like the dog you are. Am I turning on some <laughs> analog faucet to drink some barbaric water? The mouth is a primitive hole that will soon be phased out. You better start taking some pictures of those. Hey, can you phase it out now because it's pissing me off? Meanwhile, just so sassy. You know, we've kind of noted ever since Video Ouija this season, uh, the first episode of the season, he plays Insult Master. Now he's just full of insults here. But it seems like that was Shake saying OMG. He was kind of showing off. I wasn't sure in the moment if that was Shake or Meatwad because Meatwad kind of uh, says it and reacts to it more. But all right, moving on to our next clip. Of course, we are still in the same scene. In our previous clip, Shake was saying that the mouth is a primitive hole that will soon be phased out. Meatwad said, can you phase it out now because it's pissing me off. Uh, Shake is going to pop up now on his, his little texting thing. It's going to say, hell yeah, with an exclamation mark, but hell will only have one L in it. So I guess he's, I don't really understand. Like, he's like, yeah, we can phase our mouths out now. I don't really get uh, the, the connection here. But uh, more importantly in the clip, Shake is going to reveal that only these helmets can talk to each other, the one that he is wearing and the one that Meatwad is wearing. Shake will then get very angry at Meatwad, and he will try to hit him or, or attack him in some physical way. But because he's so weighed down by all this shit, he, uh, he's not very successful at getting to Meatwad. Can you read that? Or should I try a different font? Uh, you spelled hell wrong. <laughs> That's how it's spelled in the E world. All right, now put on your E helmet. I'm going to forward you a very funny story about a duck in a bar. It's not mine anymore. <laughs> I gave it to Meatwad. No! Yes. It's the only other helmet it'll talk to. It's too advanced to be compatible <laughs> with anything else. Uh, are we going to send me that funny story now? <laughs> my name is some new material. Fool my not club out. Well, I'll just tell you in person. As I jam that helmet right into your brain. No! I mean, come on! Let's go, come on! Get out! Come get you some! <sighs> What's wrong, you scared? Tell him to come over here, please. Why don't you just e message him? He's not on my contact list! <laughs> so, kind of confusing here at the end because Frylock says, uh, like, why don't you message that to Meatwad? And then, and then Shake says, well, he's not in my contact list, but it's revealed that these helmets could only speak to each other, so I'm not really sure what that means. But some great physical comedy here, the way that it plays out with, at first, Shake is struggling to get to Meatwad, and Meatwad is scared because he thinks he's going to get hit, but then Meatwad kind of realizes that Shake, his, his mobility is basically non-existent, that Meatwad is perfectly safe, so then Meatwad, you know, his, his facial expression changes, and he gets kind of cocky with uh, the way that he's speaking to Shake because he knows that there's going to be no repercussion to it. But a classic Shake line, like just this line of thinking at least, that he's like, you know, the helmets, they can only speak to each other because they're so advanced. Which that could be true, but also like, if they can only speak to each other, then what good are they really? Like, yeah, it's a super advanced technology, but it's not particularly useful, of course. This is something I'm sure we'll talk about more as the episode goes on, but I've mentioned how I recently got a VR headset, so I've been playing around with that. And like, yeah, it's this cool advanced thing, but in my friend group, there's one person who doesn't have VR, so it's like, we don't play it as much as we otherwise would because we don't want to disclude that one person. So it's like, yeah, it's this cool advanced technology, but not super useful when you can't, you know, use it with everybody the way it's kind of intended to be used. 
So ending that scene, we're going to get another Schooly D cut and we're just going to kind of see Shake standing there. Then it'll pop up on his little text messaging thing saying meet rules, which of course is spelled R-U-L-Z. And then we will pan over to Meet Wad, who has a big smile on his face. Of course, he sent this text message. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all know that. It's funny. So there's that. Moving on to our next very short clip. We just open in on Shake. He is laying down in the living room, but he's still wearing all this shit, so it looks ridiculous. He's laying down. Frylock comes in the room. And I guess uh, Shake has been receiving some racy material And he assumes it's from Meatwad because Meatwad has the helmet. But Frylock will reveal, uh, because Shake is trying to tell on Meatwad here to Frylock, Frylock will reveal that that Meatwad doesn't have the helmet anymore. Frylock, would you like to see some of the messages your little meat friend has been sending me? Oh, Meatwad doesn't have the helmet anymore. Spoiler alert. It involves a pig. (laughs) So it involves a pig. But again, you know, Frylock said... Uh, Miwa doesn't have the helmet anymore. Well, you gotta wonder who has the helmet. Of course, we cut over to Carl's house. He is just standing in his living room with the entire e-helmet system on. This this version is more upgraded than the one that Meatwad was wearing. So it seems like Carl bought the phone attachment as well as the backpack, uh, battery pack kind of thing. Because previously the helmet that Shake was gifting was just the helmet with no add-ons. So I guess Carl, he's investing into this. And we see he he's watching basically bestiality porn. And the way that they convey it here is we just see uh, basically on the, the visor part of the helmet so we can see what Carl's seeing. A pig, then we see like a shot of some legs and then eventually some underwear fall down between the legs. We go back to the pig just kind of laying there. It's just kind of like static images. And then eventually it pops up out of nowhere and Carl is surprised by this. We will see a monkey who will then start to urinate. Yeah, piggy, piggy, piggy. Come get the bacon, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's sad that you gotta wear that thong made out of corn, cause, uh, in every other way, they seem like they're in love. <laughs> oh, wait. No way. Monkey. Awesome. <laughs> so that's what Carl's getting up to here. He's jumping right into the pornography element. And it seems like Shake kind of undersold this. Not so much the pornography, but the fact that it's seemingly kind of like a VR visual experience that you can have on these which I think is kind of cool. At the very least, it's like a Google Glass situation, which the idea for Google Glass was these glasses that you wore that could then display an image that you could see uh, on the glasses. So that is pretty cool for the time being. 2004, this is some pretty neat technology. You know, Carl is using it for the purposes that you would expect, but I mean, I'm sure there are more wholesome ways to enjoy this technology. But in the commentary, they do comment on how it was kind of difficult to to find a tasteful an appropriate way to present internet bestiality. Of course, they couldn't actually show it, so they had to figure out an appropriate way to do so. And I think the way that they did, it works. Like, it's funny because it's kind of like low-tech, like you would expect from Aqua Teen. It's just these kind of uh, drawn images. I think that they knocked it out of the park with that, and I could definitely see how that would be an interesting problem to have to solve while making the episode. Back to Carl investing in the e-helmet ecosystem. I can relate to this back to VR because it's like you buy the VR headset. It comes with the controllers. You're like, all right, I'm golden. I'm done. But then you're like, ah, this head strap. It's not very comfortable. I got to buy a new head strap. Uh, I guess I'll get the head strap that has the battery pack on it for more battery power for the headset. All these controllers are not that comfortable. I need to buy like the grips for the controllers. Some people go even further. Now, I haven't done this, but some people will buy like uh, full body haptic suits so you can kind of like feel stuff like 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 uh, bass rumbling or uh, if you're playing some games, I think that like if somebody touches your arm, you would feel it on your arm. You, you can go down this rabbit hole and that is what they will do throughout this episode. I do want to note, though, that Carl does not have the e-photo plugin. He, I guess he doesn't need to take pictures. You figure he would want to take pictures of his junk to like send to people, uh, so I guess specifically to Shake. But, uh, you know, he doesn't go that far, at least. But kind of funny because Shake says that these, these are the only headsets that can talk to each other. But it's revealed that they can access some sort of archive, some sort of internet of sorts where where Carl is viewing this information. So I'm not entirely sure uh, the specifics of how these things work. And and you know what? I don't think the people who even made this episode are sure either how this works. So we're going to cut back now to the Aqua Teen's house where Shake is laying on the ground and he is also seeing the monkey peeing that Carl was seeing. So I guess that Carl is like sending this stuff to Shake. 
Um, which is funny. It reminds me of like on porn sites, there's like, oh, share to Facebook, share to Twitter. Like, what absolute maniac is sharing this shit to their fucking Facebook page? Uh, but I guess Carl might make use of that kind of technology because I guess he's he's sharing his bestiality porn here very readily with shake either that or like when one person does something on one headset the other person has to see it i'm not sure but shake is laying down he will be seeing the monkey peeing he will then fire off a text to carl i won't read it to you because he will read it himself but then we will see frylock he will go to drown all this out with his mp3 player that's right frylock he's packing music technology look at this the monkey drinking its own urine <laughs> lol i am h-o colon parentheses <laughs> you hear this not anymore what what the hell is that thing oh it's just an mp3 player holds forty thousand songs yo can track me up <laughs> so notice you know we have swears i think we'll see that more going forward ever since g whiz whenever there is a curse they will use some sort of sound effect and they had played with that before g whiz notably in uh super bowl but they didn't stick to it all the time and i think going forward now that they will kind of stick to that more which is funny i think it's it's a nice little touch whenever a character curses to have a little sound effect there but continuing with the theme of the episode, you know, uh, I guess the theme here is also greed because Shake always wants what Frylock has just in this very unconventional way. Frylock has the MP3 player. It can hold 40,000 songs. I remember back in the day when that was like a touted feature of MP3 players was like how many songs it could hold, which now, of course, is such a strange concept because of, of streaming. But even then, of course, they still do make dedicated MP3 players, you know, for the audio files out there. And even then, like, I don't think it's really like a song limit. They're probably just like one fucking terabyte uh, of space on it that will hold all your music forever, especially with interchangeable SD cards and, and things like that. I'm looking back at the iPod lineup for this time. Now, it doesn't look like like uh, Frylock is holding an iPod. It looks to be some other kind of MP3 player, but I figured this would be the easiest to look up. So when the episode is out at this point, the fourth generation of iPods had just come out. And the models or the capacities were 20 gigabytes or 40 gigabytes. So the 20 gigabyte model would have held an estimated 5,000 songs. And the 40 gigabyte model would have held an estimated 10,000 songs. So that's Frylock yet again with this kind of advanced technology. Because the highest tier iPod at this time could not hold that many songs. In fact, it, it held about one-fourth of that many songs. So uh, Frylock, he was kind of living in the future, I guess, with the technology that he had. I like the continuity of Frylock is listening to classical music here. He is listening to Mozart. I'm not going to butcher this name because it's in German. However, the German title translates to a little night music. And interestingly, back in MCP pants, when Frylock presents all this older music to Meat Wad, Mozart is not in the mix there, but it's what he's listening to here. I think it's still on brand for him. And I like the way that they attach the headphones to Frylock's head. It looks like they're just glued onto his box, right? He doesn't have ears, so they had to figure out, like, well, how do we make it look like he has these in his ears? Because they're just earbuds. It's not like like a overhead kind of headphone system, which would be easier, I think, to put on. Uh, so they just have the, the earbuds just floating, basically, on his box, because, as we know, there's no ear holes there. Again, though, Shake is jealous by this the same way that he was jealous by Frylock's phone that could take photos. So in our next clip now, we're going to cut back to Carl's house. He thinks he's done with the pornography, but it, it just turns back on and he's totally into it. But then we'll hear some music start to approach Carl's house. This is so weird. You think I'm actually done being horny? Oh, wait. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we are not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, so you heard that shakes coming along but before we get to that i want to discuss the music that we heard from carl very quickly or if you're shake uh carlos the first track that played when carl was watching porn is called passion fruits and the second track which would have been what we heard in the previous clip would have been called between the sheets and these are both kind of stock music written by danny pelfrey and rick rhodes and between the sheets the music we just heard also goes on to be used in the episode why try which will come up uh, uh, many seasons later and then onto the music that we will hear, the piano music that Shake will be playing. It is called Happy Stride Piano, composed by Eric Gemsa, and that is from the album Ragtime and New Orleans. Again, more stock music. 
Of course, thank you to the YouTube channel Video Killed the Radio Star. Link to this in the show notes. Uh, just a great resource for finding this stock Aquatine music. So uh, doing the Lord's work over there. So, all right, Shake is headed over to Carl's house. Meatwad is accompanying him, and you will hear this music get louder and louder. That is because Shake, he now has the e-piano uh, plug-in, I guess. So it's literally just a giant self-playing piano right there on his back. Come outside, baby. Don't come in here. Come on. <laughs> Why don't you just text message him? Why don't you just text shut up? <laughs> Carlos! Oh, oh. You got a big old piano on your back. <laughs> it's an e -ano. What the hell is that? It takes your MP3s that you download live off the internet and transforms them into this song. Yeah, but will it do the ultimate song? Boston's more than a feeling. Yeah, it'll do anything and turn it into this song. You're serious? Yeah, I got you one. Friggin' awesome. Do you like to do the treadmill? <laughs> Exercises for women. Now you can. The concert's in your head. A great Aqua Teen-ism here, or Matt and Dave-ism, and that you have Shake saying it takes your MP3s that you download live over the internet. That's something that they play with a lot throughout the show. Is It's just that, that phrasing of live over the internet. Like, I just love this kind of unnecessary description for a computer in a, in a way that makes it sound like more exciting than it really is i guess but yeah i mean you heard just this annoying kind of ragtime music that's blaring and the joke here is that it'll take any song that you download live off the internet and then it will convert it to your e -ano. sorry it's not e piano it is e -ano. and uh play that particular song not the song that you wanted but uh of course that's just a great shakeism i suppose of of uh twisting anything to suit his narrative the best way because he's like, yeah, it'll take whatever song you want and turn it into this song. It's like, okay, it's just this one song. It's not actually doing anything here. So as you heard, Shake, he also got an E-Anno upgrade for Carl here. Shake just acting uncharacteristically generous in this episode. But I guess he's just excited about this technology and that somebody is indulging in it with him. Like, like it, for him, it's worth to have this buddy. So he's willing to pay for these things. Again, how he's paying for it, who knows? But he's paying for it. And of course, I can relate to that. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm uh, normally as stingy as Shake to begin with, but I've definitely, for example, if there's a game I really like and I really want somebody to play it with, I'll buy it like for my friend. Like, dude, you got to try this here. I bought it for you. You play it. So I, I can understand where Shake's coming from here, especially if these e-helmets are just linked to each other. <laughs> I guess you're kind of forced to be buddy-buddy with the other guy who has one. At the beginning of the clip, I just love the way that Meatwad's like, hey, you got a big old piano on your back. Like, he's just pointing out the obvious. But all right. So now uh, both Shake and Carl, they have the e Anno add-on here. And we're going to get another Schoolie D cut. This time, uh, we just have Carl and Shake standing outside, kind of in between their houses. And there's just a bunch of traffic going by. And we get a time cut. It goes from daytime to nighttime as they're just standing out there enjoying their e helmets. Yo, Shay, I ain't wanna say nothing, man, but you look like a mom idiot. <laughs> So Shake it and call a motherfucking idiot here. Uh, Carl is spared from Schoolie's insults, uh, surprisingly enough. But there's actually a lot of detail in the time cut in that there's a bunch of vehicles going by. And in the commentary, they touch on this. And also, I slowed it down and, and picked out a few other details. So a few of the things that drive by very quickly in that time cut, we can see the paving machine from Revenge of the Trees. We see the bus from Bus of the Undead. We see the truck that killed old Drippy, which, of course, uh, a lot of these elements have come up again and again in the show, particularly the bus and the truck. There's also a helicopter that in the uh, commentary, they say that they can't say where they got it from. Uh, I assume it was some other uh, property that, that Turner had, but maybe they weren't actually supposed to use that asset for the show. And then we do see Meatwad on a scooter here, and my assumption was it was the Meatwad on a scooter from the Brack Show episode, Brack Street. If you listen to that Patreon coverage of that Brack Show episode, you'll know all about that. But it is not, because in that Brack Show episode, Meatwad is on a yellow scooter. Here, it appears to be a more blue scooter, so I went back and checked the episode Super Bowl, where Meatwad is trying, like, they try and bribe him, or Shake tries to bribe Meatwad, rather, with this scooter. I think it's that same asset. So I think it's that scooter from Super Bowl, and you have Meatwad just cruising along on it. 
And lastly, according to the commentary, they have Santa with a jetpack on. Now, it goes by too fast for me to actually make that out, but I mean, I believe, like, you can kind of see where it would be. It's just like I wouldn't have picked that up if I didn't hear them say it. So those are some of the things that drive by very quickly uh, during this time cut. So again, it is now nighttime and Shake and Carl are still standing outside between the houses. Of course, with their E-Anos uh, playing away on their back, I'd like to talk about player pianos really quickly, which is the self-playing piano. I guess they were very, very popular in the early 1900s be before like buying recorded music was really as commonplace as it, it would quickly become. And you could buy the roles that would have like the mechanism on it that would play the song for you so like if you couldn't play the music you could just put the role into your self-playing piano and it would play it for you so like we kind of see it as this novelty but i i didn't even think about the actual use for this and how that would be handy to have before you know you had your mp3 player with forty thousand songs on it or even before like vinyl records and stuff were popular back at the time so obviously once recorded music came out these self-playing pianos like the sales just fucking plummeted and they just are used now as novelties which is what i'm more familiar with but there are some people making use of them for example a few years before this aqua teen episode came out we had aphex twin putting out one of my favorite pieces of music Avril 14th, which is, uh, he, he wrote it in MIDI, which is just like note information that you could send to a, pl a player piano or you could send to a synthesizer, whatever. He wrote it in MIDI, but he did, in this case, send it to a player piano, a disc clavier. And uh, so the song, if you just hear it, it just sounds like somebody playing it on piano. But the way that it's composed, there are parts that aren't impossible to play, really, because I have seen people play them, but are very, very difficult to play. And so it's this electronic music, but being played on an actual piano. So let me play you a little bit of Avril 14th. So it's really cool because you can hear all like the key presses and stuff like they literally included that in the recording, but there's nobody actually playing the piano in that song. It's like a computer playing a piano. So uh, obviously, again, these these player pianos, they are a novelty, but you can still use them in kind of interesting and relevant ways. So moving on with our episode again, it's a time cut. It is nighttime out right now. Carl and Shake, they're kind of losing steam on the whole E-helmet situation because it's all so heavy, particularly this giant piano that's attached to them and that is playing nonstop the same song over and over again. And then Meatwad's going to come up to Shake because Shake is kind of stuck in place and Meatwad is going to slap a booger right on to Shake's face. You know, this is cool and all, but I'm kind of getting a bad headache. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. And I don't know if it's <laughs> the song... Or if it's the heavy magnets that were inserted into my neck. Here's something that must be attached to your head. I just may. What is it? <laughs> well, it's an e-booger. See, it allows booger transmission to, to the snot network. Wait, <laughs> wipe it on you, wipe it off! So that is Meatwad just slapping a booger right on Shake's face. Of course, we get a, a close-up of it uh initially too there's some hair sticking out of it uh pretty nasty but it's not like overly disgusting it's still a little cartoony here but yeah he slaps it on shake's face and then he's out of there knowing that shake can't chase him because of all the bullshit he's wearing but i want to go and talk about that music again very quickly uh you'll hear it you know you hear it throughout the whole background here but i guess according to the commentary matt and dave insisted that it be turned up even more like they wanted it to be so loud that you couldn't even hear the character speaking and to me that's some real space ghost kind of vibes that's something they would have done in space ghost aqua teen not as subversive to the viewer so obviously it didn't end up being you know that they didn't run with that idea and i'm glad they didn't because i like the the uh dialogue here we wouldn't be able to hear it but again you know, Matt and Dave did work on Space Ghost, so it doesn't surprise me that they had that idea to begin with. I mean, look at the Fire Ant episode of Space Ghost. The original version was 30 minutes long, and most of that was just Space Ghost following a Fire Ant back to its uh, back to its colony. So uh, not surprising at all to hear that that was suggested. 
So Shake's got a boogie on his face. He can't get it off. But the funny thing is, with his arms, he wouldn't be able to get it off anyways, right? Like, I don't understand just because he can't move how he can't get it off. I guess he could kind of, like, lay on the ground and rub his face off on the ground. But you know his hands. Like, he can't reach his face regardless. But so Shake is kind of locked in place here. He's going to ask Carl for help. But Carl, he is mentally locked in place because he's back to watching some bestiality porn. Great, that's going to harden now. Carl, <laughs> little help? Oh, yes. You've been a bad, bad chicken. Hey, <laughs> will you put that damn fine porn away for just two seconds? No. Check out this link. It's funny, but it's also kind of hot. <laughs> I like Carl here. It's funny, but it's also kind of hot. I like how serious Shake is at the beginning. He's like, oh, great. That's kind of hardened. <laughs> like, it's just, just kind of being whiny. Um, so on Carl's headset, like in his visor, we can see uh, there's a chicken. And this, to me, looks like one of the chickens from the dressing episode, the Ben Prisk artwork. Ben Prisk isn't credited on this episode for these drawings, but they are his. Uh, of course, he is, though, credited for the end credits of the episode, so it's not like he has no credits. But yes, this is a, a Ben Prisk drawing repurposed from the dressing, and you see a hand stroking this chicken. And according to the commentary, that seemed to be Matt Malero's idea. He said that they should have a hand stroking a cock, so that's that's exactly what they did. But, but you know, a, a more appropriate cock for national television. So Frylock is going to come in here. He's going to be complaining about the Eanos. They're too noisy. I mean, I don't blame him. But in a weird turn of events, turns out he already bought them the e Anno silencers, which are basically just giant piano covers that he will put over the e Anos on their backs. Will you shut that <laughs> ragtime music <laughs> off? This is like I live at Fakey's Pizza. Well, I like it. And turning it off is simply not an option. It does not have an off switch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. So I went ahead and ordered these. Ooh. So what are they? This is the e Anno silencer. Oh. Thank God. Very strange storytelling here. Again, just to have Frylock complaining, like, hey, shut that off. Wait a second. I already bought the thing that will silence it for you. Like, it's just very quick. But, you know, as the episode is winding down, they got to make some moves and they got to make them quick so they can't dwell on this too much. So now the e Anos are covered, but now Shake is going to request some e toms which Frylock will then install, which is basically like a lower belt for Shake with a bunch of electronic like drum pads coming out of it. And then this will start making music as well. And uh, I want to talk about the, the modular element of the E-helmet. I think it's actually pretty cool. I remember before I got my own smartphone, I remember seeing like these design concepts for modular phones. So it's like, hey, if you want to do gaming on your phone, then you can get like a, a graphics card modular chip or whatever for this thing. And then you'd have a better graphics card. If you want to take a lot of nice pictures with your phone, then you can get like the higher quality modular uh, like camera add on thing to it. So like that idea has been floated for cell phones. But to my knowledge, it never was actually made into a real product. But I always remember thinking it was so cool because it's like, I don't need like a, a fancy graphics card or or like high graphic power for my for my phone because I'm not playing games on it that kind of thing. I think it would it would open a lot of doors for customization, but I think that's a little too consumer friendly, so I'd imagine the phone companies aren't going to like it. Whichever company makes the e-helmet though, they are very consumer friendly and shake. He's going to get those e-toms hooked up no problem. Hey, hook up those E-Toms while you're back there, huh? E-Toms? Plug and play. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it drowns out the sound of the e -ano. Hey, Carl! Yeah, how you like those E-Toms, huh? <laughs> he's dead to the world. He's down on the farm, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he's, he's down on the farm, if you know what I mean. So Carl, yeah, he, he's just totally despondent. Uh, you heard Shake asking him how he likes the e -tops, and Carl's just standing there in his classic pose, just not responding whatsoever, and, and we just see, like, some dropped panties again on his visor. So some great comedy allowed here because we can see what they're watching, which is not the, the same as, like, a VR headset where you very much cannot see what the person is doing. But to one of my favorite jokes in this episode and maybe of Aqua Teen as a whole is when uh, when Frylock puts on the E-Toms on Shake and Shake just says, plug and play, <laughs> which uh, plug and play is, is a term for music gear and I'm sure other kind of USB components. But for example, if you're going to plug in like a keyboard into your computer, it, it 
might be plug and play, which means you don't have to install drivers to get it to work. You just literally plug it in and you can start playing. So that's uh, that's the situation with the e-toms here, which I like that they're called e-toms, but we can hear there's a hi-hat, there's a kick, there's a snare. There's a little bit more than toms going on here, but I think it's pretty cool. I, I like that Shake got this. I think the e-toms are definitely an upgrade that I would get for my e-helmet. I love that the point of the E-Toms is to drown out the e -ano. So they covered up the e -ano on his back, which it's like, why not just take it off, obviously? Uh, I think that goes without saying. But then they put on the E-Toms to, to drown out that sound. So we, for a brief moment, it was silent in the episode. Like they covered up that ragtime music, but now we're just going to get a kick and drum beat playing uh, throughout a lot of this episode now. So they just replaced one loop with another. And it's because of that that in this next clip now, Shake is going to ask to be brought inside. He has to pee, and Frylock won't let him come inside. I assume because of the noise, but also I can't imagine that Shake would even fit through uh, the door at this point. And of course, the whole idea of him coming inside to pee is funny, considering they supposedly don't have a bathroom. I mean, we know they have a kitchen sink. I guess he could want to pee in there, but it's like, you're outside. Just go pee, pee on the side of the house. Like, what does Shake care? Now, we have me inside. I gotta pee. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, no, Shake. You're not coming in the house with that. Well, I'm not coming into the house, but it ain't because of that reason you said. Yeah, because your stupid ass is sinking into the dirt. Well, that's what <laughs> you think, because you see that. Yeah, I do. Oh, why don't you see if you can email your pee? I will. They're <laughs> beta testing that. So, yeah, I forgot to mention that we we visibly see that Shake is sinking into the ground because he's got so much weight on him. He's in the same spot for so long. He's just starting to sink into the dirt. And I need to point out, obviously, we're missing this in an audio format, that Shake has this dried booger on his nose the entire time. So that didn't go away. Meatwad slapped that boogie right on Shake's face, and it is still there. I like the soundscape here. We have Shake's e-toms mixing in with the, the farm noises from Carl's headset. I think it would have been funnier if they had like a muffled ragtime piano in the background as well, just like making this cacophony of kind of annoying sounds. But you really can't hear the piano at this point. I, I kind of isolated the audio tracks and like cut out the dialogue and I still I didn't hear any piano. So I guess those uh, Eano mufflers work quite well. They dampen the sound very effectively. Something that I enjoy is the discrepancy between the sizes and fits of Shake's e-helmet versus Carl's because Carl's is proportioned for Carl, right? And then Shake's is proportioned for Shake, which is ridiculous. Like Shake's phone, for example, is way bigger than Carl's phone. So props to the e-helmet corporation, whoever designs this, because they really allow you to customize it to the full extent of whatever you need, because this is insane to me. I'd imagine Shake living in a, a human's world would be kind of difficult because things wouldn't be proportioned to his body, but that's not the case here. So Carl and Shake, they are stuck outside. Not only is it nighttime, but it's about to start storming. We will see some lightning, and this is particularly dangerous because of all the gear they are wearing. You would imagine that giant antenna would attract some uh, some lightning there. So Shake, he's going to ask Carl for some help, but Carl, he's just too busy with his pornography. We can see on his visor now, we see his girlfriend from the clowning. She is sitting on a horse drinking a beer. So I love the way that they are repurposing these assets. This horse asset, I'm not, uh, it, it doesn't ring any bells for me. I'm, I'm not sure if we've seen it on the show before. But yeah, Carl is too wrapped up in this. He's he's too immersed in, in the virtual reality, or I guess the mixed reality world of the E-Helmet to really understand what's going on in real life. So Shake is going to make an attempt to get free. I sure hope that new upgrade comes in before it rains. <laughs> Carl, can you move? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Can you drag me That's inside? the horse now. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Talk to me, not to candy. Look, if it rains, we could dye our hair. And those EMTs ain't gonna want to be peeling your filthy underwear off. That, that's fine. Just put, put the horse on the other end there. Okay, it's just me. Hail Mary time. I'm gonna rock back and forth. Hurt! <laughs> 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 Did you see a move? I love the way that they're able to convey this physical humor. Like, it still makes me laugh 
even though Shake isn't moving. But you see him struggling. You see the struggle in his face. His little hands are moving all over the place. He's really trying to to get out of the ground because, again, he's sunk into the ground at this point a little bit. You really see he's putting in this huge effort to get out of here. And in this episode and in this instance, we see Shake almost acting sanely like this is how any of us would act we would try and get out of the situation but he's trapped and he can't so it's kind of funny to see that i guess it's just not very often on the show that we get to see shake actually sincerely try at something and fail at doing it too so there's there's a little bit of humor in that as well at the beginning of that clip though we got some foreshadowing shake saying i sure hope that new upgrade comes in before it rains we don't know what that new upgrade is and we won't see it in this next clip but what we will see in this next clip is Meatwad is back. He's going to paint some honey on Master Shake. And there's a, a box by Master Shake. And then Meatwad opens it. It's full of bees. And the bees start attacking Shake because, again, he is stuck in place. And there's not much that he can do about it. Oh, y'all surfing the internet? Yeah, you stupid newbie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Uh, you with honey. Oh, that could be cool. Hey, what's that? Is that my package? <laughs> It's my package. No, it's not. It's mine. I'm allowed to order a package. Okay, fine. It's your package. So what did you get in your package that's not mine? No, I don't know. Let's see. Bees, boy! No. <laughs> bees! Oh, Carl, no! Help me! We got bees here! Please, did you get the link I sent you about the woman having sex with a bee? Would you <laughs> shut up? Carl is so depraved. He's watching people have sex with insects at this point. But I feel like I was just watching another show recently, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. But there was the same kind of trope of putting honey on somebody and then bees attacking it. So I spent a lot of time looking into this, and I can't find any information that actually suggests that this is a thing that bees actually do. Of course, first of all, you have to get honey bees, you assume would be the ones that would uh, react to honey uh, because not all bees produce honey. But it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, it, like they would attack if they felt that they were threatened or their hive was threatened. But if there was just honey on you, I don't understand why they would feel the need to attack you. It's not like honey makes them aggressive or anything like that. Uh, so Aqua Teen, again, is not the only one guilty of this. I've seen this a lot in, in media, but I, I don't know where it comes from. I, and I could not find any information about this. But bees, one of the things I was most scared of as a kid, you would not catch me having sex with a bee. Because when I was a kid, I remember my cousins were over. We were playing outside. A bee went up my pants and stung me. So then I was like freaking out because of that. Then my aunt and my mom had to pull my pants down in the yard and, <laughs> and check out the bee sting. So because of that, I don't like bees, but I do like pulling my pants down in public. One thing that I like from that clip is when Shake asks Meatwad what he's doing and Meatwad says, painting you with honey. And Shake's just like, that could be cool. <laughs> like he's just, he's just down for it. He'll see what happens. Why not? I mean, he's already on the cutting edge of technology, may as well be on the cutting edge of... I don't know, putting putting honey on yourself? Why not? Moving on to our next clip here, though. That new add-on has arrived finally, and it's kind of cool the way that they pull this off because we hear a truck pull up, but we don't actually see the truck. We just see these two sets of robot legs walking towards Shake and Carl, and instantly we know what's going on. These legs, they are the same color scheme as the E-helmet. These are the E-leg add-ons here. And what happens is the legs, they walk towards Shake and Carl, and then they go, like, they hop on top of the E-helmet, and then flames shoot out of the feet, so it rotates Carl and Shake, so that, basically, the E-helmet has legs, now it can walk around, so you don't even have to support this weight anymore, but you are upside down, which I can't imagine is particularly comfortable whatsoever. But the idea is there's legs now, so that they can walk away to safety and get out of the storm... But unfortunately, that's not what happens. What does happen is Carl's legs, uh, his whole e-helmet system, starts humping Shake's e-helmet system. Thank God! I couldn't be happier to see you. All right, come over here, boy. <laughs> Great, now run inside the house before it rains. Hurry up! Wait a minute, what's going on? Oh, I can't see back there. What's all doing? Y'all Look, we are advancing the world through technology. Because it looks like demo voices. That drawer's in heat. Meatwad, come here. That's not appropriate for you to see. Will someone tell me what's going on back here? There are massive motors out here. Well, obviously they don't know any better, and that's why we need the intelligence helmets. To give them reason. Frylock, 
Order the intelligent helmet immediately. Who's to handle the load? No, same, same, it's gotta be same day. I love how Meatwad is pretty maniacal throughout this episode, but then in these moments, he's kind of innocent. He's like, what, are you guys playing? What's going on here? <laughs> That's so fucked up. But uh, yeah, so Shake argues that, well, yeah, they need the intelligence system because all that this system is right now are just these like carnal desires. You need some intelligence to make it overcome these desires and not, you know, these, these two systems wanting to have sex with each other. But I love at the end of the clip too, <laughs> you know, Meatwad's like, do standard delivery. Shake's like, no, we need, sa we need same day because they're stuck out there just humping the whole time. Uh, you may have noticed that the the e toms stopped working, and that is because as soon as they started humping, like the two uh, e helmet systems here, it, there was like an explosion on Shake. It, it it's not very clear, like really what happened, but I guess just whatever did happen short circuited the uh, the e tom system, so that's why you stopped hearing it. I have to wonder why they cut that out. Uh, maybe they deemed it annoying, but again. I, I would have enjoyed if they had the e Anno playing, the E-Toms, Carl's porn, and then the humping noise. I feel like it would have been kind of cool for this episode just to keep growing in these, like, sounds keeping added on to it. But they didn't go that route. But that's all right. I'm not going to complain that they didn't purposely try and make the episode annoying. So that's basically it for that clip. And now we get a time cut, but it's a very simplistic one because... Now we're just, it, we're still outside. Carl and Shaker in the same spot. It's just daytime now, but these, these e-helmet systems, uh, they're still humping. Luckily though, the intelligence helmet did show up. Frylock's going to come out with it. It's basically just like a, a simple looking robot head, but uh, again, still in the same color scheme as the rest of the e-helmet system. I really like uh, this color scheme set up here, just, just how dated it looks, but I like that everything is matching, except for the e-ano didn't really match and same with the e-toms. Those looked a little bit more standalone and the uh, photo <laughs> plug-in. But Frylock is there with the, with the intelligence add-on, but unfortunately he's got some bad news. It's a lower end model. Uh, is Carl okay? Someone just please shut off all the sex. <laughs> I'm starting to chafe in. Uh, sorry about this shake, but we can only afford one of these and it's really not the high end model. <laughs> So what are we talking about Shut up, here? now let him talk. Well, it does have human intelligence. All right. All right, cool. Keep talking. But only of a four-year-old. Oh, crap. You know what? That's enough. <laughs> they know pain. And a four-year-old would definitely run from this. Turn it <laughs> on. Please, for the love of God. So, yeah, they can only afford one model uh, of the e-helmet intelligence system. But that should be okay because at least it could hopefully break this cycle of humping. But it has the intelligence of a four-year-old. But as Shake said... Like, there's really nobody who would enjoy this for this long. That should be enough. Frylock, he's gonna put the helmet on, and luckily, for once, Shake is right. Okay, here we go. Mommy, it's tingling. I don't understand it. Oh, oh look, it's working. No means no. I telling on you. Oh, I feel like <laughs> I need to call my parents. It's a beautiful thing, intelligence. The control and restraint shown. <laughs> so I like how this episode has, like, bestiality themes there's almost like this some kind of quasi pedophilia theme going on i like that this episode uh what didn't get as much pushback i guess as something like g Wiz did just because they were talking about jesus and god in that episode so voicing that character uh of the uh intelligence helmet on imdb it says matt malero and i've seen him credited elsewhere as that but i honestly on listening back now i don't think is true it sounds more like Dave to me, um, and in fact, I'm pretty sure it is Dave, but it's embarrassing because on my Matt Malero interview artwork, I put this little e-helmet because at the time I thought it was Matt, and now I was fucking wrong. God damn it. It's all right. I'll go back and edit it. But yeah, it seems to be Dave doing that voice. It sounds similar to other voices that he's done. It's possible it's Matt, but it just sounds closer uh, to Dave to me. But Shake was right here. I mean, the, even though it's just the intelligence of a four-year-old, it shoots this kind of uh, lightning uh, electricity out at Carl, and it, it kind of knocks that that e-helmet system back. I don't even know how to, like, describe this whole setup anymore. It's so ridiculous. And I love the visual of this, of how much shit they have on. Now they're upside down with little legs. And then when Frylock puts the the helmet, like the intelligence helmet on Shake, it's like on Shake's bottom side. And it's just like the strangest looking thing here. I really love the visuals on this episode, which again is commendable for such a simplistic episode in terms of animation because the characters really can't move like the main characters in this one. But they do a lot to keep it visually entertaining.
But yeah, the cycle is broken. But unfortunately now in our next clip, the e-helmet system, it's going to see the pool and it's going to go running towards the pool and jump in and Carl's system will do the same. I'm not really sure why. And I swear that we also hear Carl's system speaking as well, even though it doesn't, he doesn't have the intelligence helmet add-on. But that's what happens. Both these guys, they get kind of thrown in the pool via their e-helmet systems, and then they get electrocuted, then they explode. A pool! Oh boy! No, mommy, no, I go swimming! No. Oh, mommy, Where I go swimming! <laughs> Let her go! She's too young for you! <laughs> Carl showing some morals at the very end of the episode, where he's been watching porn all day, getting, getting chafed. He's been watching some horrible shit. But then here, at least, you know, we see he, he draws the line. He tells his e-helmet system, let her go. She's too young for you. So both those guys are presumably dead now. And Frylock and Meatwad, they're going to react. Well, really, the moral is that technology and that nice little padded chair in the living room <laughs> is mine. That's mine from now on, I call it. So that's, that's the end of the episode there. Uh, Meatwad, he, he tries to give some sort of moral at the end, but... Uh, Ultimately, he kind of loses track of it, and all he cares about now is that he gets the chair. And what's interesting here is Meatwad says the yellow chair, and I've always thought it was green. Like, that's just the way that I've interpreted it. Uh, but, of course, yellow, I think, is still acceptable as well. And now I'm going to put up a poll on the social medias to see uh, what you think, because now I'm genuinely curious. I've always said green chair, and, and like, nobody's reached out to me and said, hey, man, uh, that's not green, that's yellow, so... Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the consensus is. But yes, that is Edork. And normally I would read you discussion that was had the, the night this episode came out. But the website that I read from is still down. So who knows when it'll be back up. But I can't read you any of that discussion, unfortunately. So let's jump right in to my thoughts on this one. And I think that this one holds up. I really like the way that this season is going, especially the way that they are pulling back from the more violent elements of the show that we were seeing uh, at the beginning of the season, but also a lot in season two. So with something like Remooned, uh, there was some violence in G-Wiz, but not a ton. And then here, there wasn't anything until the very end when, when Carl and Shake just explode. I mean, there wasn't really any violence there. They just get electrocuted, but it's not, you know, it's nothing crazy, especially by Aqua Teen standards. So it's really cool to see that they are playing with all different kinds of episode types. They're not just kind of falling into one groove. They are uh, really playing around here with what the Aqua Teens are getting up to. And in this one, I like that it's Shake-centric, but he ropes Carl into it so we get some good Carl moments. Back to the visual elements, I just love how, as the episode goes on, it's, it's almost like the opposite of Superhero, where Shake gets more and more deformed as the episode goes on. Here, he just gets sillier and sillier because he keeps getting more and more shit added on to his e-helmet system. So I like that they just kind of subvert these tropes that they've played with before, but in like a different way. And just the fact that they can have so many great visual gags in this one, despite the fact that the main character barely moves. Like, he's, he's literally stuck in the ground for some of the episode, but it doesn't feel like the, like the episode is stuck, really. Like, it's still always moving on, there's still always things happening, and keeping things going, despite not being an action-packed kind of episode. I mean, really, the only places... We only see, like, four locations in the episode. It's Frylock's room, the living room... Carl's living room and then between their houses I guess five because at the end we see the pool uh the backyard area but yeah we don't really go anywhere in this episode but it, it doesn't feel like it and I think that that illustrates like how good this show is how how great everyone working on it is that they could pull something like that off because I don't think a lot of other shows could pull off this kind of episode uh, I mean in most other shows this is this is what's called a bottle episode where, where they don't go anywhere like in Breaking Bad there's that whole fly episode where Walt and Jesse are just stuck in the lab and it's like the worst rated episode of the show. But Aqua Teen, they could pull something like that off and it's a great time. I love, of course, whenever Aqua Teen explores technology. In this case, it's totally made up technology. But now, 20 years later, we do have VR. So they kind of did really convey that feeling that Carl had of losing track of your surroundings, losing track of time, that kind of thing, because you're in this virtual space. And it's something that I know I can relate to. Now, I want to be on record as saying that I'm not looking at bestiality porn, but 
whenever I'm playing games or my painting app or whatever, and then you just kind of like lose sense of of what's around you. And I think it's kind of cool that they conveyed that before it was even like a commonplace thing. I also love the way that they tied in Frylock and Meatwad into this one. Of course, they are not the focus of the episode, but they both play pretty important roles. So I appreciate that. So all in all, it's been a while since I'd really watched this one, but I think I'm going to give it five e-boogers out of five. I just felt like I was laughing basically the entire time. I love the way that they use Shake here. You know, as I've said, Shake can make or break an episode for me. And here he was the focus, but it wasn't really grating on me in, in, in his Shakeisms and things like that. I felt like it was a good mix of all the characters. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a funny episode. So before I head out, I just want to touch on what can we learn from this episode of Aqua Teen, and I think this one's pretty dang apparent, it's that technology might not always make your life better, and then you get so wrapped up in trying to fix the issue, it makes your life worse. And of course, I touched on that with VR a little bit, uh, not so much, but like in terms of like going down an accessory rabbit hole like Shake did. But I've also been messing around with ChatGPT, which if you don't know, is an AI thing where it like can spit out text for you. So you give it a prompt and then it'll write something and give it back. So I was trying to see how I could use it to kind of streamline uh, making this podcast. And I feel like I spent more time fucking fact checking it and finding out that it was wrong every single goddamn time that I could have just not even tried to use it and have been better off. For example... I went into ChatGPT, I'm like, hey, what's a connection between Aqua Teen and Linkin Park? Like, hey, maybe it can find connections like that. And it writes me this whole bullshit about how there was an episode with Linkin Park in it, like playing themselves and all this stuff that was not true. I asked ChatGPT, hey, summarize eDork in two sentences. And it just wrote like a completely wrong thing that was not correct whatsoever. Now, to ChatGPT's credit, I think it is useful for coming up with interview questions. I'm looking forward to doing that this year. Uh, it definitely, like, it's not like it'll give you just, oh, here's my questions, I'm done. But it can give you some good starting points, I think, or, or come up with some things that you wouldn't have thought of. But when I was trying to use it for this podcast, like for, for the history segment and things like that, um, I just didn't feel confident actually using any of the stuff I came up with with it because I'm like, these are interesting, like, facts that it's telling me but i could not like verify them or they were just straight up fucking wrong so um i think that this episode kind of conveys that and i learned it while working on this episode that technology meant to make your life better uh, especially if you're an early adapter like i assume shake was an early adapter of the e-helmet which definitely needed more work same thing i've experienced with chat gpt but also you can look at going down these accessory rabbit holes like Shake did. God knows how much money they spent throughout this episode to basically just end up dead because, uh, you know, it didn't make Shake's life any better. Nothing like that. It was all, all it gave Shake was this sense of being superior through technology, but ultimately it just made his life worse. So pretty simple there, but hey, still a lesson nonetheless. So that is it for me this week. Thank you so much for hanging out, talking teens with me, talking e-dork. This was just one of those episodes that always uh, lived, like it haunted the recesses of my memory. So I'm glad I got to watch it again with you and talk about it here. And just such a different episode from really like the rest of the show and taking it to the extreme of, of how limited the mobility is on these characters, but showing that Aqua Teen is still a good show in spite of that. So if you like this podcast, if you would like to support it, there are two ways to do that. Either you can sign up to the Patreon at patreon.com slash dancing is forbidden. Link to that in the show notes. If you want to sign up for $1, $5 or $10 a month, and you get extra content at the $5 and up tier. And if you can't afford to do that, then just sharing the show on, I don't know, Reddit, uh, Facebook groups, uh, telling another Aqua Teen fan about it, that helps out just as much so thanks for hanging out again shouts to rosemary and jason for signing up to the patreon this week and i gotta shout out the number one in the hood g tier patrons the homies sean ian captain buford brian robison and jason you guys can text me meet rules any day of the week i'll see you next week when we jump in to season three episode six little brittle. Bye-bye.